A retired NYPD sergeant with this warning on the impact of anti-police sentiment. Here's a quote. Cops are forming a conga line down at the pension section, and I don't blame them. NYPD cops are looking for better jobs with other departments or even embarking on new careers, end of quote. I want to bring in Randy Sutton, former Las Vegas police lieutenant, a leader who can talk to us about what cops are facing. Randy, thank you for being with me. We have talked all pandemic about the pressure on police officers. First COVID, the protesting that turned violent, so much going on. What has them leaving now? There is so much at play here, Harris. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, just so that your, your viewers know that my organization is the Wounded Blue or the National Assistance and Support Organization for Injured and Disabled Officers. And so we interact daily with law enforcement from around the country, big cities, small cities, small towns, villages. We interact with officers um, who are uh, either injured physically or emotionally and psychologically. Now, that's the area I want to talk about right now is, is the psychological and the emotional injuries that are taking place because they are part and parcel of why cops are leaving at record levels. And it isn't just NYPD. It is quite literally every major city in the country. And I've been, you know, mm -hmm. during our discussions previously, Harris, I forecasted a, a criminal justice um, uh, crisis and it is barreling towards us. A public safety crisis is coming towards us like a freight train. And we are seeing this is just the beginning. And I don't want to sound like, like uh, the, you know, uh, the, about the sky is falling, but the sky is falling. Wow. You don't want to sound like it, but if it's happening, you have to tell us. Uh, and, and imagine living in any place in the country where you didn't have the protection of police officers. Uh, Trayvon Free, one of the directors of Two Distant Strangers, with this during his acceptance speech on national television last night. Uh, today, the police will kill three people. And tomorrow, the police will kill three people. And the day after that, the police will kill three people. Because on average, the police in America every day kill three people. And... Those people happen to disproportionately black people. So I just ask that you please not be indifferent. Please don't be indifferent to our pain. Randy, what's your reaction to that? You know, I watch that with disgust. The reality is this, that law enforcement officers are being shot, stabbed, beaten, attacked every single day. Every single day there's a shooting of another police officer. Um, sometimes there's multiple shootings. Officers are being um, are, are being attacked uh, on, on a level that that is absolutely mind boggling. Uh, last year, um, although the, the, the final figures aren't in yet, we're, we're approaching probably over 60,000. You heard me correct. 60,000 attacks, physical attacks on law enforcement officers in this country. It's an astounding number. Remember, there's only about 900,000 officers to police this entire country. Yeah. Now, yeah. You, you, you look, at, you look at, at, at the exodus rate of NYPD and you extrapolate that over the rest of the country, and you're seeing, you're seeing um, a, a crisis in, in, that, that is happening. And when you look at the violence um, that is that has taken place. The I mean, the, the figures that you just uh, talked about this last weekend in New York City, mm -hmm. we usually hear that uh, and we don't even blink an eye for Chicago. But this is now happening in New York City, which was once in the in the mm -hmm. very recent uh, past, the safest large American city in the country. And, and, the, and the blame is so clear, Harris, the blame is so clear that uh, that is that to me, I cannot figure out why the voters of New York continue to allow themselves to be treated as as uh, literally guinea pigs on a social experiment that's literally leaving wow. a wake of wow. bodies in their wake. I, I want to get to this because you're talking about political leadership that may be letting people down or at least challenging the situation. Uh, Congresswoman Maxine Waters on Saturday lashed out at critics who had ripped her 
for her incendiary rhetoric and suggested that people are angry at black people no matter what they do, tweeting, if we take a knee, they're mad. If we speak up like I do, they're mad. If we protest like Martin Luther King Jr. taught us to do, they're mad. What is it that they expect us to do when police keep killing us? Randy, I will, before you speak, I will say this. Martin Luther King Jr. never protested at 3 o'clock in the morning. He was a daytime leader. And what we saw unravel on our streets and turn violent, those peaceful protesters basically dealing with insurgents among them, people who turned violent, was actually not what we were taught that has protected peaceful speech and protesting in America. No, you're absolutely right. And Maxine Waters, Maxine Waters is, uh, uh, I, 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 words fail me when it comes down to describing her, uh, because when I, when I watch her call for violence, I watch her actually tell people, and, and, and she has a massive audience of people, and she is a leader, both, both politically and in, their, in the community, and she is telling people that they should confront and, and, and in, in essence, attack other people because of their political views, whether it's because they're Republicans. And, 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 and Harris, when, when people can get into physical confrontations, when she calls for, for um, people to confront um, uh, people in restaurants, in public places, that leads to violent encounters. And then these violent encounters can, can turn in, into deadly encounters. And then she blames the police. Yeah, it's, you know, we are in such a stuck place. We have to start to talk to each other. We have to. I appreciate the conversation that you always have on my program. Good to see you, Randy Sutton. Thank you very much. In fact, uh, you know, in the Faulkner Focus, we, we spend a lot of time on this. Uh, the conversation around police and policing, obviously, is getting more tense. And even listening to Randy Sutton, dangerous enough for them to leave their jobs. Some are calling to disband or defund the police altogether. Officers facing vitriol as they do their jobs each day. And at the same time, there's a real anger and grief over police-involved shootings. Tomorrow, we will spend the full hour on this urgent issue. You just heard Randy Sutton say, no, we're at crisis mode now. The Faulkner Focus, police in America. I'll talk with sheriffs and officers about what they're facing every day. I'll ask lawmakers whether we'll see compromise in Congress when it comes to reform legislation. And we'll take your questions. So go to Fox News Facebook page and submit your video question to our Facebook or Instagram. And tune in tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern for something you'll only see here. Police in America.